time for another Tuesday Tech Tips from Active Datacom. This Tuesday, we will take a brief tour of the history of some of the most popular free and open source operating systems and show you how to try them yourself. One of the most popular free and open source operating systems is GNU slash Linux, often shortened to simply Linux, which will be the primary focus of this video. An operating system or OS is simply the software that manages a computer's resources and provides the services needed to run applications. Very many operating systems and variations are available, from proprietary to free and open source options, to suit just about any budget, need, or taste. Some of the most popular operating systems currently include Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS X, GNU slash Linux, Unix, and BSD. Unix and its derivatives, including, but not limited to Linux and BSD, along with GNU and related software have a long and complex history. What follows is an extremely brief and abridged summary of the history that led to the staggering array of options now available when it comes to free and open source operating systems and software. Developed in 1961 at MIT's Computation Center, led by Fernando Jose Corbato, CTSS was one of the first time-sharing operating systems. Though it was never broadly adopted, it remained under development until 1973, and was a powerful influence on the development of subsequent operating systems. One somewhat trivial example of the influence of CTSS on modern operating systems is the continued use of its term, daemon, for background programs, which is still very widely used today. Originally developed in 1964, at MIT's Computation Center, led by Fernando Jose Corbato, Multics was intended to become a commercial product for General Electric. Though groundbreaking in many respects, it had numerous disadvantages, primarily its large size and complexity, as well as its need to run on costly equipment. Bell Labs dropped out of the project in 1969, going on to host the development of Unix. Honeywell continued to develop, sell, and support Multics installations through 1985. In 1969, a team of AT&T employees at Bell Labs began the development of Unix. Due to an antitrust case settled by AT&T, Unix became available to the US government, universities, and companies, along with its source code. This resulted in enormous popularity of the operating system, along with extensions and ease of portability to various hardware architectures, including relatively inexpensive equipment. Unix has split into various branches, and is still under active development. In 1977, at the CSRG at UC Berkeley, Bill Joy began work on an extension to Unix, called the Berkeley Software Distribution, or BSD, which was released in 1978. Eventually, BSD grew into a full Unix operating system, and became the basis for an entire branch of Unix-like operating systems that remain in active development today. BSD is often used to refer, in general, to these descendants, such as FreeBSD and NetBSD. Founded in 1983, at MIT, by Richard Stallman, one intended purpose of the GNU project is to create a complete free, open source operating system. Development of the GNU kernel, heard, has been slow, but the GNU contributions to almost everything outside of the kernel, as well as many programs, have been extremely successful. GNU software has been adapted for use with various kernels, but the Linux kernel is by far the most popular host. In 1987, Andrew S. Tannenbaum, a university professor in Amsterdam, created Minix, a Unix-like operating system, to serve as an example for his textbook. Minix is still under development, and still serves as an accompanying example to the current edition of the textbook. In 1991, in Helsinki, Finland, Linus Torvalds began development of his own kernel. Despite his use and appreciation of Minix, Linux was written from scratch, and its design differs from Minix in very significant ways. After the Linux kernel's release under a free software license in 1992, it became the most common host of GNU software, which together, resulted in a complete free and open source operating system. The GNU project refers to this system as GNU slash Linux, but this name is often shortened to simply Linux, leading to some controversy. Released in 1992, originally by Peter McDonald, SLS was one of the first comprehensive GNU slash Linux distributions, or distros. 
disagreements with some decisions made by SLS developers led directly to the development of other distributions, such as Slackware, the oldest existing distribution, released by Patrick Walker in 1993, and several others. Since anyone with the inclination and ability can create a custom distribution, the number of distros has increased ever since. The total number of distros is believed by some to exceed 600. Many distros have very specific uses and audiences, and some are not intended for live usage in production environments. According to distrowatch.com, a site that aggregates news and details about distributions of Linux, BSD, and other operating systems, the top 5 most popular distros are as follows. Ubuntu, available at ubuntu.com, Fedora, available at fedoraproject.org, Mint, available at linuxmint.com, OpenSUSE, available at opensuse.org, and Debian, available at debian.org. Most distros offer what are called live CDs or live DVDs, which allow a user to test drive an operating system without installing it and affect the host computer in any permanent way. These discs often serve as the installation media as well, and are generally available for downloading, in the form of disc images, for burning to disc locally. Some discs are also available to be shipped to end users, usually at minimal cost, and sometimes for free. To use a live CD or DVD, simply follow these steps. Choose the OS and distro in which you are interested, find and download the live CD disk image, burn the image to a physical disk, and boot to the new disk. Make sure to read any instructions carefully, to make sure that you do not make any permanent changes. When you are finished, simply shut down the system, remove the disk, and restart the system. As we mentioned previously, one of the most popular Linux distributions is called Ubuntu. To try out Ubuntu specifically, open your browser and visit Ubuntu.com. Once there, you can read all about Ubuntu Linux, and if you are interested, click the button marked, Download Ubuntu. On the Ubuntu download page, there is a great deal of information, including detailed help for specific needs. Simply click the button marked Show Me How, next to whatever task with which you need help. Follow the instructions carefully, and you will be test driving Ubuntu Linux in no time. To try other operating systems, visit distrowatch.com to find the distributions that best fit your needs and tastes, read news and user reviews, and more. This has been another Tuesday Tech Tips from Active Datacom. Thank you for watching, and if you ever need help with your computer, network, website, or any IT issues, just call, click, or come by. Call us at 662-620-7996, visit us online at www.callactive.com, or stop by at 1137 West Main Street, in Tupelo, Mississippi.